you guys. Thanks for coming along. So we're spending a day at the shelter and uh, we've got a bunch of things in store. We're going to uh, obviously showcase a few pieces of, uh, of gear. Um, a few older ones, a few newer ones. Got a big tarp we're going to put over the shelter. Perfect time to do it because we've just lost all the snow and now it's starting to cool down again and uh, expect a big dump here in the next few days. But we'll get that all situated. Make a fire reflector. I'm uh, pretty, pretty excited. I've got my uh, Canadian Bushcraft Axman course. Um, always a good, good review if nothing else. I think I'm qualified, but it's always good to have a review and help out some others. That's on the weekend. And uh, yeah, today's just going to be a nice day in the woods. Some open fire cooking and some bushcraft, trying out my new carving spoon. And it should be fun. All right, let's get in there. Our shelters in one piece and everything's where we left it. In the absence of snow we can now see a lot of the uh, leftover sticks and little bits and pieces we, we use for the shelter and uh, it'll be a good time to collect some firewood for later. What we're hoping to do today is build a little bit of a, a reflector, wood reflector to reflect it back into the cabin, into the, the shelter and uh, we brought some a tarp we're going to tarp it all in. This is a perfect time without the uh, the snow here to tarp it in, so we can, you know, fasten it in semi permanently uh, before the big weather gets here. We also had this brace put up last time. I'm thinking about putting in. I brought some uh, <coughs> insulated wrap and uh, put that in as a again a back reflector for when we're sitting or uh, laying on the, the bench. We have a, a reflective backing to really keep us keep us warm from the, the heat the fire throws off. All right, let's get situated here. Okay, we've collected our tinder for our fire and what we'll try to do is use our charred cloth from last video and we'll show you how well that works.
always a good idea to have a little fire pack. It just has all your fire making utensils all in the one place. And we'll showcase for you a few different options today. Just as we're digging everything out, I, uh, I'm going to need my my uh, little fire grate here. So we might as well set that up while it's while it's accessible. There you go. And that's the same one I used in the Show Us Your Steak Challenge. Very sturdy front feed. I'll set that into the uh, into the fire pit area here and we'll uh, have it ready for later. A couple of options we, uh, we've seen before is uh, different methods of fire starting. And you may have seen the flint and steel before and um, we've got uh, oh, your regular department store magnesium striker and flint on the side or ferro rod on the side um, a lot of a lot of people I, I get a kick out of these TV shows they'll they'll get this but uh, all they know how to do is uh, strike the uh, Kind of the flint portion of it when in fact this block is part of the fire starting uh, kind of material itself being magnesium lights easily and very very hot you know it'll it'll catch a spark and throw a very hot flame but uh they just think that's some sort of handle and uh they just strike this uh until it's gone and uh, trying to get a fire started but meanwhile if they sacrifice part of the magnesium block then it uh, it works uh, much better. So there's an example of a magnesium block. Now this one is all but lost, had the uh, the striker used up. Um, I do find that the the little saw blade, the serrated edges, it's uh, I guess it's 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 great. It really bites in and throws a spark, but often it's it just degrades the the uh, the striker. Uh, little, it's it's handy for the magnesium block, but it just degrades the striker so fast that uh, it's not always it doesn't always work that well. <clears throat> and in the last video, we showcased the uh, kind of the homemade uh, fire straw. I call it. Basically, this was a telescoping uh, fly swatter. And uh, from the from the dollar store, and the end quite honestly just uh, broke off, and this end was sealed, but uh, I was able to take my uh, my hacksaw and cut that off, and now it's a hole all the way through, and it just packs down perfectly. Um, it's certainly a, it's cheap enough that any everybody can use it, but when you're using it, you can really get away from your your uh, kind of coals or the ember. And just a just a, sla a soft, steady blow is really all you need to really kind of coax that uh, sometimes ember or flames to uh, to grow. So it's always a good good piece of equipment for your pack. <clears throat> so my flint and steel is getting wore down quite a ways, but uh, this is what I use, and. Uh, usually find some success with it. So we're going to try that today to be quite uh, quite new and different. My charred cloth, I don't know if it was the, the denim or the duration of time I had it in there, but it's really it's really frayed frayed down. I think it was a combination of uh, um, perhaps the stretchy denim uh, that was found in some of these pants. So it didn't work quite as well as I wanted, but uh, 
Um, I think we're going to give it a shot anyways. So for using flint, flint and steel, how I do it, I sit my charred cloth on top of the flint rock. And what I'm trying to do is hold that very tightly. Again, your knuckles are pr protected by the, the steel. And I'm going to strike the striker in a quick, hard downward motion in, in hopes that a spark lands on our uh, charred cloth. And if it lands on there, it'll often stay. And then from there, I'll have time to transfer it into my, my tinder bundle. Once a spark lands on that, you can see it's starting to glow there now. Ah, you have time. You don't drop it. While we're on the topic of fire, I want to show you another option. These are little fire, homemade fire packets, easy to make. Basically, it's a straw, and inside we have, it's waterproof, and inside, basically cut the straw open. And inside is the head of a cotton Q-tip that's been dipped in kind of petroleum jelly or Vaseline. And you can fluff this open. And I want to show you how much of a good fire starter this is as well. So we fluff that open. We can leave the, card, card, the cardboard Q-tip piece inside like so. We can take our kind of tinder bundle and just set that right inside, inside the nest. Okay. Now we strike it with our ferrule rod and uh, that should take quite easily. Let's try it.
decided with the tarp, a lot of these posts are going to get in the way. So we're going to trim those off. And to help me with that is uh, my new Fiskars Power Tooth pruning saw. 33 centimeters, 13 inches. I'd like to make it a nice sheath for it instead of the, just this uh, this tooth cover, but uh, we'll give it a try. Trimming down some of these uh, posts on our uh, shelf here. Aggressive teeth. Those of you would call those extra large for sure. But uh, Fiskars is a lifetime guarantee. Any problems, you just take it back to any any dealer. Many uh, hardware stores, department stores may carry this. Fiskars Power Tooth. Nice and light. And the curve acts really works well when you have to. Pull the saw back, it works on the pull stroke primarily. Very sharp, very sharp. All right, let's see if we can get the start fixed up. Sawdust. Well, the tarp's on. I, uh, I'm not 100% happy with it, but it'll keep some of the weather off. And a uh, very heavy duty tarp. It's got uh, brown on the outside, so it makes it a little less uh, of an eyesore, so that's good. So we're going to heat up some, uh, some lunch, and what I have is some pork ribs. So we're going to set them on the grill and uh, let them warm up and into some ribs for lunch. <clears throat> Another little treat I found in the freezer was some vegan Kung Pao chicken. Veggie chicken. So for all the vegans out there, I'll support that and have a also a vegan lunch.
it's not this show us your steak challenge, but uh, it's just as good. Open fire cooking. Nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. Quick pair of homemade chopsticks. Not the best of cordage, but split a stick, green stick, put a little wedge off the end in there, lash them together, and you got a pair of cheater, cheater tongs for chopsticks. I forgot my fork. As long as it is. Feel like the bearded woodsman out here eating a big rack of bones. It's all good. Chris is a great guy. It's kind of like a meat sickle. Chickadees are coming around now. Kind of have like having meat and veggies all in one, isn't it? So new on this trip, I uh, threw in this. This is my Fiskars power tooth, and I thought I'd just give it a quick little once over. Uh, you saw me using it there. Very, very comfortable handle. Um, that curvature really helps on the uh, draw stroke. This is the only kind of blade protection piece you have, but uh, lifetime warranty. Uh, made in uh, made in China, but from Canada. Fiskers is based out of Markham, Ontario. Super aggressive teeth, as you can see. And uh, yeah, it works really good. Quite light. I think I might spray paint this uh, this tooth cover just, just so I don't lose it. It's uh, 13 inches, blades 13 inches. Works really nice, super light. Um, you know, it's not a folding saw, but for something that's, uh, you want it quick and open and, and not be worrying about opening and closing the saw, that's a nice option. This one's only, uh, $14 at, uh, my local hardware store, so I don't think I could really pass it up. There you go. Fisker's Power Tooth. Pruning saw. Works well.
guys, thanks for joining me today. It's been a great day at the uh, the shelter. This has been episode three. We worked on putting on the tarp, reinforcing the walls, put a bit of a headboard or from the bed a little bit. We started the day with a little bit of a fire lighting technique uh, demonstrations, and uh, we worked on the fire pit a little bit. We cooked our lunch, some nice leftovers, and we did a little review on a Fiskars pruning saw. Pretty aggressive uh, teeth for a saw, a very solid saw, and, and uh, certainly the price is right for sure. Well, that's been all for today. We gotta head out of here. Click like, subscribe, and share. Share with a friend, and don't forget to uh, enjoy your outdoors. I'm Jeff off the gridiron. Bye for now. Take care.